Hello everyone. Welcome to another session on cloud computing. In this session, we will talk about Docker and virtual machines and their combined effect. In previous session, we have discussed about uh, how the containers are helping in deployment and shipping of the application, how they are making it convenient to migrate from one production environment to the second production environment. So let us look, uh, take a look at inside the container. So uh, these are the layers inside the container. You can see that there is a layer, bottom layer is uh, stated as a kernel. On the top of the kernel, there is a layer called as uh, libraries and the top layer is the actual application or actual package that the user is going to get a as a service. So this is a layered image. When this image will start execution, when we will launch this image, we will create a container. Executing image is called as a container. The docker container uh, execution depends on the kernel. Here I have used the logo from Linux because docker kernel have to be a Linux kernel. To execute a docker container, docker image, we must have a kernel from the Linux system. Now, uh, I am sure that you are aware of WSL, Windows subsystem for Linux. So, in case if we are willing to execute docker containers in the Windows based environment, which is a different kernel, here we are stating that to execute a docker container, you must have a Linux kernel with you. Then how you can execute a docker container image on a Windows platform? So in case of a Windows platform, to execute a docker container, we must have WSL layer, Windows subsystem, Windows subsystem for Linux. So uh, when we will take a demo in next few uh, recordings, we will talk about WSL, we will take a practical demo of how WSL is uh, getting used by the Docker desktop and Docker client to communicate with the Docker daemon and how Docker daemon is using this uh, WSL to run the container, run the images and have an executable container. So when we will start a demo, uh, we will resume this point of WSL in the Windows platform. If you are using a Linux computer. Uh, like a Ubuntu or a Fedora or a CentOS or any other Linux flavor or if you are using a Mac based operating system, then the, the, you have access to the Linux kernel and this uh, extra WSL layer is not required. So uh, this is what is a container, a bottom layer, the kernel on top of which all the libraries will execute. On the top of the libraries, actual application that you are going to get from the container. So here we are taking an example of an Apache container. Let us assume that you are planning to deploy a web page and uh, traditionally what you have to do is uh, you have to install a web server on your computer, then put your appropriate uh, develop appropriate uh, code and put it into the directory of uh, Apache uh, from which you will be able to launch the service. If I use a container uh, which have a Apache inside it, what we have to do is uh, you are not or we are not bothered about installing Apache on a computer. While installing the Apache on a computer, it will have some software dependencies, some package requirement. So we have to satisfy that. That all will be removed. Just have to take a container, uh, image of a container which have Apache inside it, then execute that container using the Docker environment and I will be able to use Apache on my computer. By putting all the uh, appropriate files into the directory of Apache, HTTP directory of Apache, we will have a web page running in the website, uh, HTTP port. All the headache of deploying, configuring and managing the libraries and Apache server has been removed. You have to just take a container, take an image, put your code inside the image and launch the container. That's it. The job is done. Now, let's say initially you have some few hundreds of uh, uh, clients, few hundreds of users who are hitting your web page. What if the number of users using your web page has increased and you are getting a slow response or you are getting a performance degradation from the container? 
what we can do is we can launch multiple containers and then divert the traffic from different containers. So this is a diagram. What it is showing is on the hardware we have some operating system and that on the top of the operating system we have created multiple copies of the same container. Now all the incoming request will be distributed among these containers. Earlier we had only one container which was supporting all the incoming request as the as the requirement of a page or as the page hit has increased depending on how much load we have or how much incoming requests are coming we can decide how many containers we need to launch and simply divert the new incoming request to the newly freshly launched containers. This is how we can achieve load balancing using containers. What if we put virtual machines and containers together? So, this diagram is showing us uh, we have a hardware on the top of the hardware we have a virtual technology like a virtual machine monitor and using this bare metal virtual technology we have created two virtual machines on the hardware namely say virtual machine 1 and virtual machine 2 let us call it as sorry let us call it as vm1 and let us call it as vm2. Inside the virtual machine we have different containers running. So, this will be an isolated environment. Now, you can see that uh, I can use this virtual machine to launch a application. Let us say I have a requirement to run a student ERP system and a, a, a accounting system. So, what I can do is uh, I will create a virtual machine in which uh, I will run student uh, management system and I will run a VM2 in which I will launch accounting system. So, you can not only uh, separate the containers, isolated containers, you can also have a virtual machine dedicated for application and inside the virtual machine you are having containers which are actually running the services. So, this is having uh, uh, virtual machines and container together. It is more beneficial as you can have a complete isolation between the virtual machines and inside the virtual machines you are again not bothered about uh, deployment of uh, libraries and maintaining the dependencies you are you making use of a uh, containers. What is another benefit of this? In future let us say if you have a requirement to migrate from one virtual machine to the second virtual machine you have to just ship the container from a uh, container between the virtual machines. Like if I decide to migrate this service from virtual machine 1 to virtual machine 2 and take virtual machine 1 uh, for the maintenance. So, that is also possible. You have to just ship the containers, save the state of the containers and ship them to the new virtual machine and take a maintenance call. So, this provides a enhanced ability for managing the application. Let us take a look at the brief differences between the docker and virtual machine. So, docker have a less isolation as it shares the same OS. If we take a look at this diagram, the docker is built on the docker environment is executing on the same operating system platform. Although it have a isolation, the independence like each container is going to execute independently, each container have its own libraries in isolation, but still they are sharing the operating system. In the case of virtual machine, the operating system is completely independent and it is running inside the virtual machine. They have a more uh, isolation compared to the docker environment. Main purpose of uh, docker is to package and uh, custom containerize the application making it convenient to ship them, port them, manage it, run it on different platforms. Whereas, the main purpose of a virtualization is to have a uh, multiple operating systems running on the same hardware. So, uh, in the case of a docker, we are not concentrating on utilization of underlying hardware resources, whereas the virtual machine is main focus is on maximizing the utilization of underlying resources, hardware resources. Docker is a lightweight, have a simple image, so it takes less storage requirement, whereas in the case of a virtual machine, we have to complete install the operating system, maintain it then have a complete uh, dedicated uh, virtual disk for the virtual machine and then deploy all the softwares inside the virtual machine. So, obviously, it have more storage requirement compared to the docker environment or a containerized environment.
boot time of a docker as it is running on the top of the operating system which is already in execution docker runs as if you are running a simple application so boot time of a docker image is very very short very uh, very small if we compare the virtual machines with the docker it needs more booting time as you are running a uh, booting going to boot a complete operating system from the scratch uh, which will emulate the behavior of a uh, booting up a physical machine it will take more time compared to a docker which is going to run as if you are running a simple application so these are the brief uh, differences and common uses of a docker and a virtual machine a brief usage of uh, you putting virtual machines together with the docker uh, in the next session in the next lesson we will talk about uh, how the development and operations teams are using containers dockers to manage their job uh, or manage their uh, uh, deployment of a software and life cycle of a software very conveniently and then we'll move on with the demo of docker environment thank you